been in what, about a month, and uh, my life has definitely changed. Uh, today was my first uh, committee hearings. I sat in two committee hearings, and I don't know if you heard, but I have been assigned the Homeland Security Public Safety Committee. Whoa. And that, that comes pretty funny because after all the hoopla about my comments about Texas Muslim <laughs> Capital Day, <laughs> and then I get this assignment. But prior to that, I had put down uh, my request yeah. for committees. And I'd already submitted them to the speaker, and I had gone to visit with him, and I told him, I said, I just wanted to give you some rationale as to why I listed the committees on my chart here. And I said, I, and I put down Homeland Security and Public Safety as my number one pick. Mm -hmm. And other members told me, no way, Molly, you're going to get it. You might as well not even put it down there. You know, you're going to be, you'll be lucky to get any committees that you want. And they said it was a very difficult committee to get on. Uh, you're a freshman. But I told the speaker, I said, you know, I know a lot of people said this is a very difficult committee to get on, but my daddy always said, <laughs> it never hurts to ask. And I'm asking for this committee. <laughs> And I also asked for um, Veterans Affairs, uh, Health, uh, and then my other three were State Affairs, Calendars, and I think Tourism. So after you know the comments about Texas Muslim Day and all the hoopla that came from that, and I, let me tell you, I got support from people not only all over Texas, all over the United States, and all over the world. <laughs> about. I just didn't maybe phrase it correctly because I was in a hurry. But I know this organization. I know this organization called CARE. And they have been classified by the United Arab Emirates as a terrorist organization. They were founded by the Muslim Brotherhood. They funnel money to Hamas. They are unindicted co-conspirators of the Israeli Holy Land trials. I mean, these, this is a bad group. In fact, that wasn't my first meeting with them. But they're invited to the White House. Yes, I know. <laughs> well, look, we're going to talk about that because there's a very great meeting coming up in San Antonio, so remind me to tell you about that. But um, several years ago, at the United Nations, which I've gone to every year for years, to conferences, I had met some representatives of CARE. And they seemed really nice and friendly, and, and they wanted my organization to partner with them. And so I thought about it, and then I talked to my dad, and he says, no, Molly, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't do it. And I said, well, I'm going to investigate who they are. Well, you, you just go to their website. Oh. <laughs> and when you see a picture of Akhmadinejad on there, you're thinking, oh, okay, there's one red flag. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And then you start reading about their founders, uh -huh. yeah. and I thought, no way. So I... I wasn't a stranger to care, um, but I'm also not a stranger to the threat that we have in our own country. Yeah. Right. And we cannot just roll over and play dead and pretend like everybody's here and they all love America and they're going to accept our Constitution and our laws because that's not the case. No. And I'll tell you a story real quick that after that happened, what, on a Thursday? Then we had the whole weekend, and on Monday, I had a visitor from the Muslim community come to visit me. And, and of course, I welcomed him to come in and talk. And he said, well, I'm coming here to bring a, a peace offering. And he brought a fruit basket or something. And, 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 <laughs> um, anyway, so he said, well, many people in my community wanted to come and slap you because of what you said. And I thought, well, you know, there's there's an ideological difference here. I said, this is the United States of America. Yes. We have freedom of speech, freedom of thought, freedom of religion, without fear of persecution or prosecution. I said, and so when you tell me that people in your community want to come and commit an act of violence against me, then we have a problem. Right. And he goes, well, that's why I'm here. You know, so anyway, we, we, we talked a little bit, and, and he, he and I started talking about American law. He goes, well, Sharia law is equal with American law. And I said, no, 
sir, it is not. That's right. Yeah, I said, yeah, this is yeah. the United States of America, and our law is supreme above all law. That's right. That's right. And so, anyway, we had some more small talk, and, and he left. And um, uh, later on, he wanted to to uh, post on his Facebook that I had agreed that Islam was a peaceful religion. Uh -oh. no, 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 no. I never, ever said that. And I said, no, I, I prefer him not posting comments from me on his Facebook. And uh, anyway, he, kept, he called back the next day after my interview with the Texas Tribune and was very angry that I did not apologize. So, uh, but... I wasn't going to. If, if, you, if, you, if you come to our state capitol and you're sponsored by an organization linked to terrorism and whose purpose is to advance Sharia, I have some questions for you. And if you can't answer these questions, then I don't, I'm not going to do business with you. In fact, the Texas leader of CARE in 2013 stood on our state capitals and said, if you're a practicing Muslim, you're above the law of the land. Oh. Does that send up red flags? They did with me. Anyway, so uh, anyway, so all this happened, and on Monday I thought, well, I don't know exactly how my other members are going to um, react to me when I come back to Austin. And I was a little apprehensive about it, but I had an overwhelming positive response. In fact, a lot of positive. <laughs> I got a lot of that a go girl, we're proud of you, but it was whispering <laughs> in my ear. I said, don't whisper, shout it from the rooftops, you know. Because every one of you members got the same letter that I got mm -hmm. prior to leaving, you know, because we got a letter from a, an individual who was really uh, warning us about who this group was and who they represent. So anyway, after all of that, um, the committee assignments were starting to come down, and my chief of staff runs into my office and said, You got Homeland Security? <laughs> and, and besides border security, and I talked to uh, Chairman Phillips after our uh, committee today, and we had uh, uh, Colonel. Uh, McGraw come in and Major General Nichols come in and talk to us about what's going on the border, yeah. about the success of having reinforcements down there, the National Guard, what they're going to need to continue that surge. And after the, the committee was over and I, I took uh, Chairman Phillips in the back and I said, you know, we need to address the terror threats in our state. Right. Yeah. And I have some professionals that I would like to invite to come and speak to our committee. He says, let's bring them in. And so that's going to lead me to the next little uh, information. I believe I sent this to you, Irene, and I don't know if you were 40 or not, but I spoke at Act for America in San Antonio last Friday night, and they are an organization that is dedicated to, let me see what they say right here, um, the defense um, Yeah, to the defense and protection of our country. Well, they're bringing in former FBI Special Agent John Guandalo, who for eight years taught at the FBI Academy and other federal agencies the facts about the Muslim Brotherhood, Egypt, the United Arab Emirates, that the United Arab Emirates has declared them, them, CARE, and ISNA as terrorist organizations. And yet our own government refuses to do the same. And Claire Lopez, <coughs> excuse me, who's the Vice President for Research and Analysis at the Center for Security Policy, Frank Gaffney's organization, Claire is sought out by Fox News, CNN, MSNBC, and C-SPAN, and other outlets for her views on Iran, ISIS, Middle East terrorism, and organizations, and all things Muslim Brotherhood. So if you can all, if you can, if you make it to San Antonio on March 13th, I encourage you to do so. These are the people that I'm going to have come and speak uh, to our committee. If you're interested in knowing about that, so you can come to Austin, then I would be glad to put you on my email list and send you information, or better yet, invite them to come and educate this group.